What's going on? Yeah, another video. <laughs> another video next day. Today's Thursday. Today's Thursday. Um, yesterday I was talking about um, how to make money in this brutal car market, right? But um, one thing you can do, one thing you can do, and I just got an email this morning from a young man in Maryland as I'm making this video. If you're doing the car buying service, you know, the Mannheim Hustle, if you're a, a, you know, a dealer, you have your own dealership, or you're an authorized representative, you know, you have access to the auctions, or you're flipping cars on your own, whatever it is, you're making money in the business, raise your prices. All right. I used to charge what seven fifty, eight fifty per vehicle when I did that more often. Um, you know, buying a car for someone, right? I charge them a fee. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna sit here and find this this car for you. I'm going through these photos, I'm making the comparisons between this car and that car, and I'm saving you money, right? So I charge a fee for that. I used to charge seven fifty, eight fifty. On a vehicle that's six, seven, eight thousand dollars, something like that. But now that demand is up and supply is down, you're going to spend more time finding those vehicles for people. If you're doing the Mannheim hustle, if you, you know, if you're buying, if you, if you're doing the car buying service as a part of your business, right? It's a little more challenging. It's challenging. So you're going to spend more time. More energy, charge more, charge twelve fifty. Why not? Um, because you deserve it. Don't shortchange yourself. Okay, that's number one. Never shortchange yourself. Don't be afraid to raise your prices if it's legitimate. All right. Um, you have to value yourself first because people won't value you more than you value you. All right. That's number one. Um, number two, I'm actually in the market for a newer vehicle. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, my car, my had an infinity, I have an infinity, you know, the motor kicked out on me and catalytic converters, you know, it was 2013, 2012 G37. It's like, you know what? I need to go newer. <laughs> I need to go newer. I want something newer. Um, so I was just test, I was, uh, I was riding with this, uh, forerunner, a forerunner. It was brand new. It was 2021. Um, but I have a subscription, right? So I'm paying $6.99 a month. Oh, not too bad. You know, not too bad. Um, and I like it. So I'm about to go out and buy one. Um, but what I want to tell you is I'm not going to just buy it. I'm going to put it in my company name. I either lease it, right? I either lease something new. Or I'll buy something and go to the credit union in the process of that credit union stuff, but buying it and then put it in my company. Now, actually, I may not be able to do it with the credit union. But the bottom line is I'm going to put this new vehicle now in my company LLC, not my personal name, not my own person. And what does that do? That allows me another level of write-offs, right? We, never really, we don't really talk about that. But I mentioned this before in the past. If you don't have an LLC, get one. You need one, two, at least two, at least two to be able to more efficiently manage your expenses, right? And not just in your business, but in your regular life, in your regular day to day. So when I get this new vehicle, whether I lease it or purchase it and put it in my business name, I'll have the ability to write off a whole nother level of monies, right? Right? I'm not an accountant. I'm not an accountant. So I can't tell you the exact amount of dollars. But when you put, I'm going to kick this to my accountant. So I'm paying him for it. But when I buy the car, I'm, I'm going to be able to depreciate, right? The cost over a period of time. I wouldn't be able to do that if I bought that vehicle and registered it to my persona. The vehicle now is registered to my business, all right? And so any asset, any business, equipment, et cetera, et cetera, you're able to depreciate that over a succession of several years, all right? So um, that's something to think about. If you're in the market, you're buying a new car, 
set up an LLC, right? Create a business. Even if you don't have a business, create one. If you don't have the idea, create something. Create something. You have to, this is the things that the wealthy people in this country do. They know how to utilize the tax code and other types of mechanisms to minimize their taxes and things of that nature. So we, you know, the average Joe Schmo, the average American, whatever, we didn't really learn that stuff in school, right? So do some research and save yourself on some taxes and expense out what you can. Let's be smart about it and let's make money.